So this is a quick version on how to install machine tools for Blender. You drag your downloaded zip file into Blender and machine tools is installed. You are done. It's that easy, ideally at least. Now what follows is a longer version based on my experience of developing Blender add-ons for the past eight years and thereby doing mostly unintentional Blender product support and remote Blender configuration debugging. Before installing machine tools or any other add-on for that matter, please ensure your Blender configuration is in order. You can do this by checking the system console. Windows users can just bring up the console from the window menu here. Nice. Mac OS and Linux users won't have that option, however, and instead need to launch Blender from the terminal. If you see any errors or exceptions in the console, please get these fixed before you attempt to install anything new. Otherwise, your pre-existing issues can prevent other add-ons from installing or working correctly. The system console directly after a Blender launch, without you doing anything, should be completely pristine. There can be some information in there, but there should be no errors, no exceptions at all. If there are, find out which add-on is causing that, which you can usually tell by the path that is given in the error message, and then disable that add-on. I'm installing Machine Tools 1.12 on Blender 4.3 here now. Currently, at the time of making this video, supported Blender versions range from Blender 4.2 to 4.4. If you use machine tools with Blender versions outside of the supported range, you may encounter problems, because newer add-on features may depend on Blender features not yet present in older versions of Blender, and newer Blender versions may introduce API changes not supported by the add-on yet. Also note that fixing issues you may encounter in Blender Alpha or Beta versions is not a priority, but I do encourage you to report them. Also, if you're in a situation where you have to use an older Blender version, then I can supply you with a matching older version of the add-on too. Just send me a mail with your receipt, and I'll give you a link. Mac OS users should pay attention to following official Blender installation instructions and avoid running Blender directly from the Downloads folder. This avoids what's known as App Translocation, or Gatekeeper Path Randomization, which may make installing add-ons or finding an add-ons folder impossible. And note that when you drag your Blender app into the Applications folder, make sure to hold the Command key. For users of Arch Linux or similar rolling release distributions, or those building Blender from source, it's important to pay attention to your system's Python version. Official Blender builds come with a bundled Python, but if you use a custom build, your system's Python may be version mismatched. Blender itself and all add-ons supporting a specific Blender version expect to find a specific Python version too. So expect problems if your system's Python is different. For example, if an add-on supports Blender 4.4, it expects Python 3.11, which is what the official Blender build supplies, rather than a newer system installed version, like Python 3.13 perhaps, which would be a minor version mismatch. For that reason, I recommend against using an Arch community package of Blender. Instead, just use the official Blender build. The easiest way to install an add-on in Blender is by simply dragging and dropping it on Blender from the file browser. If you don't have a zip file but a folder, then most likely, it's because your web browser extracted it automatically. You need to disable this behavior in your web browser settings. So make sure you have a zip file and avoid creating it from a folder yourself. Just use the one that you download and is supplied by me. Then just drag the file into Blender, accept the defaults and press OK. The add-on is now installed. To further verify the installation, look for machine tools in the 3D views sidebar. It now includes the get support tool after a fresh installation. But keep in mind that only a few features of machine tools are ever exposed here, and all of those have to be activated by you first, at least in the Prime variant. The best way to confirm the add-ons installation is through Blender's preferences, however. Go to the Add-ons tab and find the add-on. It's already selected for me because I've just installed it, and it should be the same for you. If not, just find it among the other add-ons. If the checkbox is set, it means the add-on is installed and enabled. You can open the preferences to view the add-on's various settings. Machine Tools is a huge add-on and very customizable, with dozens of different tools and pie menus, but only a few are activated by default so as to not overwhelm the user. This gives you full control over how much of the add-on you want to utilize in your workflow, maybe increasingly more the more time you spend with it. If you let it, Machine Tools can significantly streamline and transform your Blender experience. Or, you can just use the Modes Pie and Focus tool. Both of these have specific settings here. 
and both also have key mappings, which you can adjust to your liking in the key maps tab. The focus tool, for instance, sets three key maps, each with different behaviors, whereas the modes pie sets two key maps, one for the 3D view and the other for the image editor. Also, in the About tab, you can find some of my links if you're curious. Now, if you activate all the components of machine tools, you can see just how massive the add-on really is. The size of the code base has now surpassed even decal machine. But anyway, while I use it extensively, you might prefer selecting only a few components. Most tools are quite well documented, so I encourage you to explore the docs or ask if anything is ever not clear. Due to its history of originally being a free add-on for six years, some parts of machine tools are admittedly still a bit underdocumented, however, but bear with me, I'm working on it. Now, if you don't want to see the Get Support tool in the sidebar, you can disable it. And if you activate Group Tools, the Machine tab becomes available again, but you can also disable the sidebar completely if you want and access the Group Tools from the Context menu or the Modes Pie, for instance. Altogether, there are four tools, or rather, tool groups, in the sidebar only, plus the optional Get Support tool. Everything else is either key mapped or in the context menus. Also, if you ever require product support, please do use the Get Support button. I have a whole video on it too and would ask you to watch it first before reaching out to me. Thank you. Now, if you have a previous version installed, you would do an update installation, and it basically works exactly the same. In my case here, I have the previous version 111 of Machine Tools installed. You can see it in the add-on preferences too. You may have changed some default settings and have various non-default tools activated. You may have adjusted some key maps too. But if you now were to disable the add-on, uninstall it, and then install the new version, you'd lose all your custom settings and key maps. So I recommend against doing that. Instead, you can just bring up your file browser again and drag and drop the new version zip file into Blender. This will install it. Blender should indicate that the new version is installed and you should see the new version in the add-on preference, but may still see the old one in the sidebar panel. Either way, I recommend always restarting Blender now, before you start using the new add-on version. Once you're back in Blender, the updated version will be there. All of your custom settings and key maps should be maintained, but a few may not, if they have been renamed internally, for instance. So, adjust things to your liking again, and you are ready to go. There's an alternative way to install updates using the built-in updater, and so I'm back in Blender here, with an older version of Machine Tools again. To then access the built-in updater, go to the Machine Tools add-on preferences. I should point out that this is not internet-based, so you'll still need to download the zip file first. You can skip the file browser, however, and the updater will locate the zip file as long as it's in your downloads folder or home directory. You can just select the updated version and then install it which will then also shut down Blender for you. Like the drag and drop update installation, this method will also maintain your existing add-on settings and key maps. This update method was actually introduced shortly before Blender started to support drag and drop installations. And I believe it is a cleaner method because it removes the old installation folder first and then installs the new one, all while still keeping your previous add-on settings and key maps. The Blender drag and drop installation on the other hand, simply extracts the new version over the old one, which could potentially cause issues. That said, this built-in updater can fail if your system console isn't clean and there are errors on Blender shutdown. These can be hard to notice because they are triggered by Blender quitting, and so you would have to start Blender from the terminal to see them, even on Windows. Your console might look perfectly clean after starting Blender, but may still have issues when quitting. Anyway, let's give it a try. Blender quits. I restart, and now I'm back in it. And there you go. This is the updated version, and all my settings are maintained.